Welcome back everyone. We're playing episode 3, scenario 8C of the campaign After the Storm, which is called Breakdown. Darkness. Silence. And then... The pain. A pain so strong. The pain was excruciating. It was absolutely unlike any other pain I had ever felt. This pain was not just emotional. My very soul was coming apart at the seams. I closed my eyes and tried to wake up from what I wished were just a horrible nightmare. To no avail. Where darkness used to be, there was a powerful, eye-piercing glare. The pain would not go away, no matter what I did. Instead, it was seeping through my veins and growing greater every passing instant. With my mind clouded by the horror, I could only think of one possible form of relief. Destruction. I felt compelled to give in to those dark urges. Perhaps if I released enough energy from my body, the pain would entirely vanish, or the dream world that held me captive would crumble away and would be released back to reality. My chest continued to burn with that energy. For a moment, I considered jumping into the nearby abyss in an attempt to wake up. But that moment was cut short by a familiar presence. Could it be? She was there, watching me from a distance, silent, smirking. The next thing I knew, I was standing in front of her, about to blast her face like I did to that cave. Your recovery took longer than I expected. Save your energy for later, dear. What have you done? I would greatly prefer that you learned some self-constraint and resisted the temptation to blast everything in sight. Trust me, I have been there. I know what it feels like. But I will not tolerate such displays of weakness from the predestined guardian of Earth, and I will not hesitate to rip your heart out of your chest if you fail to show some respect for yourself. Guardian of Earth. Ah oh, yes, I almost forgot. You are still a stupid and ignorant elf. I still don't understand how you lived for longer than any of us, and yet your awakening has only just taken place. And again, you were blessed by Illuvia. Yes, that must be it. The powers conferred by the Union atrophied your heart. What am I? An abomination. A creature that violates the laws of nature for the purpose of protecting it in some way. That's the far set up by the first gods. Your energy heart draws from an unlimited power source and provides you with vast potential according to the aspect that Erdia's seed itself assigned to you. Some degree of control over Earth, absolute command of the arcane flame and all the creatures whose life force is based on it, and immortality at an inconvenient cost. Didn't you ever wonder why no other elves had your unprecedented affinity with the fairy realm? Why your abnormally long life has been an endless strife? Why you could never conceive children? Why every single person you ever loved died? The necromancer. The necromancer I vanquished. Argan told me about that. Just another conceited sorcerer with his mouth full of air in the end. People tend to overestimate the dying words of those skilled in the forbidden arts, mostly out of fear. No, my dear, you were always cursed before even meeting that insignificant necromancer. You could even say Erdia herself cursed you, and that would not be entirely inaccurate. Every guardian that has existed shares your curse. Even I do, 
in spite of my condition as an unwilling usurper. Why did you not kill me? Because that would be a terrible waste of potential. Trust me, I could not wish harder for the day your soul is permanently destroyed, but this is not the most appropriate moment for that. Ah yes, I forgot to mention that clause. Naturally born guardians like you awaken once their soul fully merges with their energy heart, and the only way to kill a guardian is through their heart, so... I should destroy you right now. You are the abomination, not me. And then who would help you fight our common enemy? Do you even know what turned him into the monster you fought in Wesmere? Django, that air said he is a shapeshifter. Isn't that the true form of a shapeshifter? <laughs> Your ignorance is as limitless as the powers you will eventually master and use against me. No, Shakespeare... Shakespeare... Shapeshifters do not have a true form beyond that which they individually choose for themselves. Granted, they are nearly distinguishable from humans or elves during childhood. Jangor chose a form that is as hideous as his soul. He might have taken some inspiration from the gatekeeper he slew in Avatha, the gatekeeper whose heart he consumed and absorbed into his body. And we nip back to poor old Anya, Durvan, and Agea. True shapeshifters were never meant to become guardians. Every creature was created in such a way they could be eliminated should they represent a peril to the balance of nature. But the oldest shapeshifters defy that rule, as you undoubtedly realised after dealing with Django. Combined with the heart of a guardian... They may also defy the soul clause by turning the entirety of their nigh indestructible bodies into their hearts. We should be thankful that the girl you took under your wing does not have the same grandiose aspirations as our delightful demon lord. Anya, what is she? She is a thing we mistakenly assumed would never exist. She is the true guardian of darkness of the second cycle. I do not know how she came into existence, seeing as how the seed on Eurathid was said to have been absorbed by Murthial. Then again, it is just as troubling that the Uriah we all know exists as well as your counterpart on Silida. Who really knows what was going through the heads of the three goddesses who ended and restarted it all? There is another guardian of Earth like me? I would hardly call her such. Her pact with Uriah requires her to sit idle in her stupid fairyland being generally useless. Granted, she did secretly guide Argan so we would find you and so I would kill you. It is rather disappointing, really. I am fairly certain she would be a more competent aide than you. What do you want me to do? First, we must destroy Jangor, together. Then we can decide who gets to inherit Erdia through an old-fashioned duel between just the two of us. What do you intend to do with Anya? She can be my apprentice if she wishes. Otherwise, she can live as long as she doesn't try to interfere with my own plans. It is said that Uriah wants to invade that world, Ethere, that she might find a way to harness the Union, but you intend to sit here and do nothing other than solving your irrelevant quarrel with Jango. It is not as irrelevant as you think. Anyway, Uriah has various options to choose from on Ethere, and I suspect you will opt for all of them. The body of the Union, for starters. Then there is the Seed of Life, and whoever the goddess is designated as the rightful heiress of the aspect of life if anyone at all. But Uriah will not be alone in her quest, for the new guardian of water on Norsula also plans business with Athea. In fact, he is already there. In the worst case, one will win and reshape our reality at their whim. In the best case, they will only manage to destroy themselves along with Athea. It is pretty pointless to intervene either way. Uriah promised to me I would inherit this world before she decided to exhume the present you left for her. And now that she will be too busy confronting the Norsul and his forces, 
You may call me ignorant and stupid, but I don't fail to notice you refer to Uriah with disdain. What is stopping you from taking her on directly? Have you been on her side all this time, merely because you fear her? She, should, she stood still for a moment, pondering my words. Her reaction was delayed and mechanical. She pushed me with her strange weapon, and both my chest and the weapon's core glowed with the colour of blood. A familiar feeling of void followed. While the pain in my body diminished, I felt weaker and barely able to stand. Still, I could recognise the energy expelled by the artefact. Do not forget who is in charge, my dear. I can end your life in an instant if you decide to be uncooperative. We are doing this on my terms. I... And from now on, you shall remain completely silent unless I require you to speak. Do you understand? Of course you do. All right, we've got an objective. We've got two level six guardians. Uh, locate the entrance to the lowest level. Uh, if either of them die, we lose. We've got a bunch of turns, so... Um, a bind spell disallows Linnea from moving when she is not within Elissa's maximum movement range. You will need to synchronize both characters' movements to prevent Elinia from lagging behind. Okay, they do have the same movement, so I guess it's best they just stay next to each other. It looks like we need to head north. Alright, we've got enemies, we've got a drone. So Alyssa should be pretty meaty. Aspect of Darkness, okay. She's got the Obscures bonus on adjacent locations. She's got Regeneration. Um, she's Immortal, which <laughs> is pretty handy. Can only be killed by specific units and counts as level zero for XP calculation purposes during combat. Okay, so um, weak units aren't really just gonna just instantly level up against us. We've got a nice Claw of Ervatha melee attack, Mighty Noctum attack, and Pyra Noctum 24-3. As for Alinea, she's now in her Guardian of Earth form. He's also got the Immortality, Cancer's Level 0, Regeneration, Sylvan Essence, 16 HP, Healing and Curing per turn, Self-Concealment on Vegetated Terrain. Protection, she has. And her new ranged attack is Arcane Rage. And she's got 137 hit points, which is just insane. And her Ensnare slows and stuns. Alright, it's a turn. Why are you attacking me? Yet another of Django's tricks. He really pays attention to detail, but turning every single one of my allies against me will not suffice to stop me. Okay, so... We've got a, a um, one of those thingamajigamy bobs. The union was not enough to destroy that demon. I thought I commanded you to remain silent. If you truly wanted to kill me, you would have done so already. You want my help against Django, but there is nothing I can offer that you do not already have. You even have the Ruby of Fire. A weapon, a catalyst of destruction that is much safer to use for our kind than our own inner power. I intend to tear Django apart with it, but the fact that he is a creature of both light and darkness puts me at a disadvantage. To counteract his power, I need the assistance of someone well versed in the path of light, and he knows that. Hence, he secured the support of Demon Lord Hemeriliel and her subordinates and brought them with him. Oh well, that plan went to, uh, to shit, didn't it? As the Lady of Light you used to be, you understand the powers of light better than I do, and you control an aspect that is also affiliated with it. The aspects of darkness and light are both interwoven in the very fabric of our reality. Although the powers they confer are often underestimated on their own, the combination of either aspect with any other can have formidable effects. It is generally agreed that the combination of darkness and light in particular serves as a connection to the power of the Union power most intimately related to creation itself.
Life draws from light and darkness. Existence draws from darkness and light. Fire and water oppose each other just as creation and destruction do. Thunder and ice are opposites in the same sense as earth and air complement each other. All the aspects that govern our universe are closely related and equally important to the continuance of reality. Their roles are as flexible as necessary to accomplish the ultimate goal of preserving the first god's legacy, no matter the cost. Alright, let's check out this potion in the corner. Mokea said I would find a power beneath Kalari that would allow us to turn the tide of war in our favour and purge Uriah's influence from Erdia. Was she lying? That demoness asked our seer many things and failed to understand nearly all of them. About the particular thing you ask, she was right, in a way. The power to end this was always within you, dear. Who knows how things would have turned out if you had healed Argan instead of killing him. The Lady of Light and the Master of Darkness, wielding the Union and the Aspect of Earth against Uriah. But since you did not follow that road, you might as well say I am the power you sought. You sound decidedly bitter whenever you mention Arkham. What is... None of your business. Keep your mouth shut. Ooh. Guardian class beings are distinguished by the existence of a special organ in their bodies called the Energy Heart. The organ acts as a virtually unlimited source of energy and sustenance for the creature, able to keep it alive under circumstances that would otherwise result in permanent damage or even death. In fact, the host body can suffer any kind of injuries and they will be gradually healed by the energy heart, the healing rate depending on the severity of the damage, as well as the host's contamination level. The organ goes through its own growth and maturation process, independent from the host body. Nautilan studies conducted on the seed of fire during the second cycle have shown that it is possible to artificially grow the organ in the bodies of non-guardians, albeit with disastrous effects. An alternative approach was used to build the first prototype of an artificial guardian, keeping the energy heart in a separate insulated container with a direct pathway to the host's nervous system and an electronic control unit. The research subjects were all deceased Norseulans, and none of them managed to establish a stable connection with their energy hearts. It is suspected that there is a less evident connection between the body, energy heart and spirit of a real guardian that allows them to fully control their three constituent parts, a connection to the seed that gave them birth and the greater design laid out first by Yare, and then by Delethea. So much lore! Okay, it's a potion of dreadful taste. Yuck. Why do you want Irja so much? Will you ever stop asking questions? Fire forges knowledge. Light wards knowledge. Darkness craves knowledge. Water brooks knowledge. Alright, let's go and fight, fight Jerony McDrone in the face again. Yep, no great threat here. Delinia thinks it'll be fun to use the fire attack. Oh, we got level 3 this time. And down we go. Delinia's halfway, Elissa's halfway towards a level. Doesn't seem like any of these guys are hugely threatening to us. Well, there's quite a lot of them. 
we just seem to see mostly that uh, oh, you're back okay let's get out of your way can we get through this gate doesn't look like it we'll have to go into the swamp I guess or else down here Over there is deep water. I can go in there. It's going to be a very slow process. They're much keener to attack Elissa than they are to attack anyone else. Ten percent defense, not fantastic. Okay, and these drones are coming back. And Elissa, that Elinia can't quite get to solid ground. So we're going to get attacked again. And Alinea is decidedly not as much of a beast. The underground portion of the citadel is larger than you may have suspected, and it can take a whole day to cover it entirely. Teleporting around here is an impossibility since your last intrusion, so we'll need to create some shortcuts ourselves. Destroy that wall. Excellent. You will eventually learn to focus your energy for more productive purposes. That is a vain hope, of course. You really do not believe the elf will ever attain a greater degree of control over her aspect. She is just too incompetent for the burden. You can only wonder why events conspired to make her the heiress of Irdia, instead of someone more mentally and emotionally fit. Okay, on we go. Oh, there we've got a dog. Okay. Um, let's not have Elinia take that on. It shouldn't be able to kill her because she is immortal, but... Um, Alyssa is much better prepared for that sort of fighting. Alright, uh, she can't go in and do it, but... Okay, lots of people here. Let's just trigger the dog. done with it. You guys can make it as well, that's fine. Okay, you're not completely invincible, but all you need is a level 1 kill in order to get an after maximum level, so let's use you to zap this most powerful Chaos Invader. Whoa! Okay. We've got Strength question mark, hit points plus 12, we've got Focus question mark, Pyro Noctum strikes plus 1. Um, we've got Argan's Lament, Terror ability. Pretty good against weak units. Initiative Chlorvavatha first strike weapon special. Soul Eater Chlorvavatha drains special. That could be handy. 
Scorched Earth, Pyronoctum, Abattoir Special, Murthial's Despair, Noctum Shockwave Special, or just Vitality. And I wouldn't take that if I take Strength or Focus question mark. Um, seems like an extra Pyronoctum Strike would be mighty. But I want to increase her melee abilities for now, so that she's a bit more well-rounded. So she's getting Drain. Okay, a linear by comparison is fairly useless there. Well, two. All right, we're going south. We're going north. Um, let's go north. What do we see north? All right. Well, there's more chaos warriors down there. There's more path up here. That's impassable. Once again, hit with the old impassable fun, and uh, we'll get another chaos warrior coming out. Lure out another one. Last, last one. No, uh, two more. With drain, you'll be fine. Let Elinia in to get some kills. Okay, we've got a gut wrench room there. You come out to fight if you dare. I guess they will dare, because... Nailed you! And Elinia also destroys. And we progress. Can I recruit anything? Nope. Can I recall anything? Nope. Separated from your soldiers. What soldiers? Weird that that was a leader at all, really. That crack was not there before, but it matters little. We can continue descending by our, by our own means. There is another corridor right below this area, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't done this in a while. If the demoness's unsettling grin is any indication, Destroying things is as stimulating for her as it is for me. Suppose that is the curse of our kind. What were the first gods' intentions when entrusting their precious creator creation to such flawed stewards? That should do just fine. There is an underground river just adjacent to the corridor that we can follow. And there's a mechanical goliath here, but those guys, since we first fought one, are honestly almost insulting to our intelligence. So let's get into a healing position and go straight in with Pyrenoctum. What was that fire damage to this guy? Some special aspect of darkness thing? I guess we'll find out, maybe. Or not. <laughs> this scenario is really all about the lols. Because um, all that's really going on here is... Well... It's very much what you see on the tin. It's... Uh, a couple of powerful units just owning everything that they come across. Except this guy. Okay, down here we've got another impassable road, so I guess we need to go into the water.
Oh. I didn't uh, read what that said. Something about another corridor. Alyssa can now summon fire guardians. Okay. Fire guardians can be summoned by right clicking on a vacant hex adjacent to Alyssa. You may only have six fire guardians on the map at any given time. And you don't need gold for it. Sweet. That's all I can summon this turn. Well, I'll be more where this came from. What did you heal? Oh, you've got regenerate. You're actually pretty powerful. I'd like to feed the experience to Alinea, though. Alright, there we go. You go grab some healing. You come down here. You guys can go out and scout a bit. As far as I can tell, you guys are completely expendable, so I see no reason not to just throw you at our enemies with ridiculous abandon. See you there. Okay, you can go back here, you guys all... Pretty good fire damage against demons. Whoa! You come out of nowhere! Can I feed the damage to Alinea? No, I can't. Not near enough. Have to go for. Fast attack. Right, you guys just go in there and uh, take. Oh! Basically, suicide on this guy, I guess. I can always make more. Just gotta watch out that he doesn't get too much experience. Hit this guy. Okay, we've got a Mind Raider back here. Down goes that demon. Interesting that you chose not to kill the one that was heavily weakened. Um, now it's really basically time to go for the swarm attack. I don't suppose giving these guys levels up is going to be a greatly valuable endeavour. Bit more health, that's all. None of them are dead yet. Courage! The fire must be extinguished for her betrayal! Go! Find her! That must be yet another of those minor demon lords. I wonder what kind of story Jango made up for them. You are betraying Uriah by plotting against Jango. 
Only if she wants to put it in that light. Okay, I explained to you how the succession system works on Earth, Arthur. Did you forget? Not really, but I would appreciate it if you stopped reading my thoughts and memories at every opportunity. Alright, gotta vanquish Jerunog. And there's lots of cold units here who presumably are quite good against these guys. Yeah. Alright, well, bring them on, is what I say. Can always just make more guardians. Oh, these guys have been unlucky. Can't go on. No, there we go. I was thinking, surely one of these guys has to die eventually. And there we have it. Doesn't even matter that I've got minus 50%. Find Jerry Nog then. Oh, okay, here's some enemy troops coming to us. I think they're coming to us anyway. Elina? Not Elinia, the demon Zephyr. Um, we can get another Fire Guardian. Why not? And let's go. Yeah, Fireball Attack's not really going to do the trick on me. Spam, 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 spam the invincible replaceable units. You've got a good ability that allows you to boost people behind you, people in front of you, so. You go all the way around, and ooh, these guys can be quite nasty in terms of the damage they can do. But I have no concerns. None whatsoever. Was that? Yeah, that was a normal one. The good strong one, I want to come here. And get more experience. This one can come down. You two. You come down here. And you, I hope, will finish the job. Nope. All right, next guy. There we go. Arcane's pretty powerful against these guardians as well. The RNG's kind of been on my side in this game, which it didn't need to be. I can bring in my powerful guardian units in order to do a bit more damage here. Some arcane rage in on this guy. And then yeah, this uh, can come down here and knock to this bloke. Spam out a Fire Guardian there.
close to an after maximum, but we'll probably die, unfortunately. Let's try and kill this one. Like I said, it's not crucial to keep these guys alive in any sense. Get another Fire Guardian? No, I can't have any more. You. Okay, down you go. Oh, you've done pretty well in experience. Okay, that's the end of that. Can you kill this guy? Yeah, two hits will do it. Alright, here is our leader. A level 4 Armageddon Imp. Not, however, someone who I fear too much in the context of fighting my level 6s. So, let's bring out... maybe I can lure you out onto poor defensive ground. Replenish my Fire Guardians, and here we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So this guy's not quite the complete pushover that I thought he was going to be. Probably just go straight in full damage mode. I mean, you can actually kill him with what? Well, you'd need to get all five hits, but you could. Okay, we got one of the bashers. Now, to see two by a fairy and a human, and finish me. I am not human. Oh, big bada boom. Um, we can have another fire guardian, just block the way a little bit. get a house for what that's worth. Oh, okay. Lots of enemies there. Back up a bit. Still no great concern. These guys were scary when I was fighting them with level 1s. Not so much anymore. Even if three of them together can take out one of my fire guardians. That was weird. Did, did you just... that one just ignored the skirmish. How did they get round? Shouldn't have been able to get past him. Maybe it can fly over walls. Hmm... You come and attack. Where's the one that's on 56? Okay, there's, that's you.
for you as well. Okay, good. We've got a fair few now who are getting towards those high levels. The rest of you can plonk your asses down on villages. Not that it makes that much difference for you. Doesn't affect my income at all. I don't have an income. And I'm almost back where I started. How lovely. This scenario is mostly a kind of opportunity to show off the awesome abilities of your new heroes rather than anything else. Sure, the fire guardians that Elissa summoned last time are a bit more, a bit weaker than this one. Still, and there we go. We can have strength X, focus X, an extra arcane range damage, extra hit points plus ten, and melee plus one. Um, I think that because again, I want to even out her abilities a bit. So now, 147 hit points, she's got even more than Alyssa has. More worms, more drones. Nothing new under the sun. Get a nice cozy line of fire people. More worms, nothing exciting. came from. Alright, 
That's a ray blade. Can go at you with one of these guys, or maybe wait till you come through. Yeah, wait till you come through. You've gone for the dumbest possible choice. Alright, we've got a glyph. I guess that'll teleport us somewhere. Got to watch out for the effects of that rune now if we get too far away from each other. One more drone. Alright, what's our objective? Locate the entrance. Alright. The orbs of light and darkness do not just allow those blessed by Alluvia to summon the Union itself. Given every aspect's individual affiliation with either path, it may be possible to use the orbs as instruments to tap into the powers of the other aspects. As the first avatar of the Union herself, Alluvia made use of this mechanism to aid Uriah and Tiael in destroying every other corrupted guardian before banishing Yare from our universe. Alright, so where do I go from here? It looks like all the paths are blocked. That's what we just saw. Can we see any other way to go? Not really. Ah, there we go. And that is the end of part 8C breakdown. We'll be back with part 2 of Destiny, which is scenario 8D of episode 3 of the campaign After the Storm. But that will be next time, and this is the end of this time. So please leave a like if you like the video, and tune in next time for more Destiny.